Right, I am pretty stoked over here. I just got in my uh, Plan B molds. You'll actually see this on um, the next mail call. So, because I, I think I'm going to do a mail call every Friday because I order a lot of stuff, and it's pretty cool to see uh, how Cadex business grows and the amount of stuff you can do. But anyway, this is my uh, one of my few UV5R Pros. Um, I have the extended 38 battery on it. I have a couple of these. I got the extended uh, antenna, as you can see. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, uh, they're absolutely awesome. They're uh, ham radios. Uh, yes, you need your ham license to uh, go ahead and use that function, but they also work as frequency walkie. Mode. They work as walkie-talkies as well. Uh, you just got to make sure you're in the right frequency. But anyways, so uh, over at Plan B Holsters, Oliver made these, and I just finished drilling this out, and as you can see. Um, I had to switch to a bigger one, not happy about that, but it's the only one that I had that was thick enough to go through this. But uh, we're going to do a test pull on this one. I have not drilled the front yet. I've only drilled the back, um, so I don't really care if the bigger holes are on the back side because you don't see that side because it's mounted against the vest. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I got the heat press going, and for those of you who are asking, literally the name of this is Combo Heat Press Machine. There's, It's a really a, a no-name. I bought it off of Amazon. It came with... Those attachments for doing, um, let's see here, hats, dishes, and mugs. So uh, there's that set up. I have it obviously right next to this. Uh, I got my screen mesh down. That acts as a barrier so the air has a place to go. And uh, again, I have mine set. I don't know if you can see it because of that, but it's uh, right now it's at 380 degrees. But 410 degrees at 110 seconds is what this particular uh, press runs at to get my decks at about 370 degrees in that 110 seconds. This right here is Teflon paper. You can get it at heatpressnation.com. Uh, there's also a couple people who sell it on the forums that we are on on Facebook called Kydex Benders. A uh, guy's name is Aaron. Um, he sells phenomenal stuff, uh, but you can find those on there as well. Uh, but again, mine was uh, Heat Press Nation. And this is 16 by 16, and I think it was 8 bucks. Uh, if you don't use it, it'll uh, stick to the bottom on the heat pad, which you really don't want because that makes a mess. So just by pressing it down, doing your deal, and then bam. Uh, there's also another trick you can do. Um, if your Kydex is stored outside or an area that's not really climate controlled, like my shop, it is climate controlled, but my heater went out, so I'm running a wood stove way over there. Oh, wow, smoky in here. Um, anyways, um, you can, if you add more pressure, it'll get out the, like the bubbles. So kind of do like a, uh, like a, a press, let the, with the foam board, cause there's going to be foam underneath. If you let that warm up, it gets the moisture out of all that, which is why you see this, you know, it's hovering over it or it's closed when it's warming up cause it gets that out. And then the tighter you do it, the better it works as well. I, I don't know why it does it, but it just, it works. Um, so I have moderate pressure on mine. So shiny side up, put the Teflon paper on. And this particular one doesn't have an automatic countdown. Once it goes down, you have to hit the button. So we'll lock it down and hit there. And then you can see it's down. So uh, after a hundred seconds, it's gonna come out and we're gonna do our very first pull on the back of ours. So again, this is from uh, Oliver over at Plan B. He makes a lot of molds for us Kydex benders. Guy is a phenomenal guy to work with. Very down to earth, humble dude. Uh, I highly recommend doing business with him if you guys are looking for some molds. So again, UV5R um, is the other side over here and we're gonna drill it after we see how this one fits. So pretty excited over this and uh, we're gonna wait another 79 seconds before we're able to pump this out. So we'll see you then. Also, another thing, if uh, you didn't see it in my last video, so my air compressor is obviously plugged in. So instead of reaching over and flipping the switch each time, I have it on a foot pedal. So all I need to do is just do that. So I don't have to, I don't have to touch it at all, which is phenomenal because I could put all my time and attention and focus right here, and all I have to do is just lay my foot down on it. So. That's absolutely phenomenal. We got 28 seconds left. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my uh, gloves on. Cause like I said, this will come out at about 370 degrees. It's enough to not feel good. And we have our 
frame ready. Got our air ready. So let's see how this does. Five seconds left. I'm excited. All right. Again, don't let it touch itself when you peel it. Throw it over it. Oh, look at that. Also, if you're not familiar, the reason why we use air is to cool it off quicker. So now it's going to be fine to the touch. It'll still be warm in the edges because we didn't blow there, so it'll still be, see, malleable. Um, but this, this up here is fine. But that is, that's beautiful. That's going to get cut there, right across. The main reason uh, I was a little worried about those thicker holes is because I didn't want to see an indent in here. And I don't see an indent. So that actually, that looks phenomenal. A little bit of tenting, no big deal. That's going to get cut off anyway. And uh, yeah, let's get it out, which really is just hit it across your bench right here. So that came out no problem. There it is. Let's look at the inside. Yeah, you can't really, you can't even really see those big, big holes. That's, that is phenomenal. Oh, I'll tell you what, he, Oliver definitely makes some good products. Which means that whoever buys his products makes good products as well. So, But it's also on how you uh, finish the edging. So I know what I would like to see is a closed bottom. But this right here, this edge, that's where the, um, the battery stops. So that's where it holds down. So it's not going to fall through anyway. And we're going to be cutting about halfway through that. So no big deal. And if you actually, I don't know if you can notice this, but there's a line right here. That line is... Um, well, pretty much I figured out that that is where his um, router bit runs to cut it. And uh, it also gives you, on this side, a line to follow to cut it if you don't use the trim jig. Now, I didn't go with the trim jig because I believe it was an additional $355. And uh, I don't plan on selling a lot to um, make up with that right off the bat. So eventually I will get it. Uh, the main reason I assume why it's so much money is because he actually has, uh, it's a two-piece setup, so it's like this one here and then the other side opposite. And so you can run half of each shell each time and then do half of the other shell uh, once you flip them. So uh, it's a great design, it really is, but I, I honestly am not paying 355 at the moment, you know, I honestly probably down the road I will that way they're all uniform and they're all the same But if I'm only doing onesie twosie stuff, that's fine So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll offer these on my website as well If you have the UV 5R by Bofang, then um, you can get these on my website What I am personally will do is when I sell these I will just cut it out rough this, just the rectangle, then that's it. Uh, I'll drill the holes, cut it out rough, and then that's how you'll get it. So you'll put it together and do it the same. So uh, personally, again, I would cut it out square, draw the holes, clean them up. I don't have to worry about mounting hardware. But then after which, I would um, rivet it together, make sure it's all set, and then cut it out. Because at that point, you're going to be cutting both at the exact same time, and you're going to have uh, perfect edges. And then you could go ahead and clean it and sand it and do your thing. So... I think I'm going to go ahead and drill that uh, the front side because I'm super happy about this. And, uh, yeah, we'll film that and we'll, uh, we'll press that side. So, looking forward to it. All right, the front side. So, uh, there's absolutely no holes in this. We're about to drill them. And the reason why, obviously, we're going to be drilling them is because that well, that's how the vacuum gets through. So, I personally, every so often, you know, like I'll split something. So, I'll put one here. And here, and then I'll put something in the middle. Every bend, I put one. So each corner, I'll put one. Down here, I'll put one up here. Uh, so pretty much every level, you're going to get one. And then I personally put one next to each nipple. Um, that way it sucks down right at the nipple and it's perfectly flat. I won't need to do here because it's, it's going to go through these small areas. But I'll do here and here. And then I'll do like one, two, and then one, one, and then one, two, one, two. And then uh, just get it going. So, but again, each corner... Each um, 
difference in uh, height or layers and then uh, yeah so I'll go ahead and let's see here so for example start here I have a drill press but it's downstairs and I don't feel like going downstairs <clears throat> And then I'll split it. We also don't want it to look like Swiss cheese. You also have to be very careful to um, not hit the taller surface with the chuck because what it'll do is actually it'll dig into it. Then at the end, you can either take your uh, countersink or the deburr tool, um, or just hit it with the, uh, the razor. But going. And clean your bit off every so often. said uh, do each one of the nipples <clears throat> that way the material goes down around it put one in the center oh see I hit right there but luckily it's at the bottom all right so let's hit here split it but that's a long line so I'm actually gonna do two There's one and two and then there is three nipples on this side there's one two right there and if you do one on that trim line I showed you earlier then it'll literally vacuum that whole line and it'll actually look good all right so we got that 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 I don't think we'll need one here um, we'll see I don't want to drill holes everywhere but I'm definitely gonna put some right there underneath <clears throat> here okay and then let's see here I'll do one here Side of this one, much easier with a drill press, but like I said, it's downstairs. <clears throat> All right, so now I take the razor. And then a very important step is I'm going to blow it all out with air. That way it doesn't get sucked into the vacuum because I'm not running a, uh, um, a filter on mine. So whatever debris I have 
it could potentially suck in there. So, but uh, this looks great. And like I said, I might have to do that, but we're going to go ahead and rock a, uh, a press right now. So I am going to find a piece of black Kydex that I could use, and then uh, we'll rock this and see how it looks. So I have the piece of Kydex in. Uh, a few things to take in uh, consideration for the uh, size of it is uh, the height and then the size, size of your frame. So yeah, there's a lot of math involved, but you know, you can really simplify it. But um, what I do is outline the frame and then just go a couple inches on the outside on how high it is because you're going to have the distance of going down and then out. So just kind of one way to look at it. So however high it is, do that past the frame. So... But we got 30 seconds left. This is um, 0.08 thick, and uh, this is what I predominantly use, and that's what that's what that was. So, get ready. Get this stuff out of the way. We got our air ready, and uh, got our foot pedal all set up. And I am looking forward to this. So, do a quick blow off of Kydex dust, and we have six seconds. Hell yeah! Again, don't do not let the Kydex touch itself because you will ruin it. Throw it over. All right. Uh, it's a little spot. And then we'll bust it out of the mold. There it is. And uh, all right, so we can see the drill marks. No big deal, but we can't see it on this side, which is pretty much what the goal is. I don't really don't care if you can see it on the inside, but that looks good. So we didn't have to drill a hole here. Everything else looks absolutely pisser. I like it. So we'll go ahead, drill the holes, clean them, and then uh, you have to mount your MRD, because this is a radio mount with the MRD, and then uh, go ahead and rivet everything together. Uh, I don't have the correct rivet tool here. This is the one I have, but if you notice, they're so tight to the body, I won't be able to reach it. So it's either relocate the rivets or grind this down. So I'm going to opt for grinding this down. So I'm going to go ahead and shave it down on a grinder. And then at that point, we'll finish this video. But again, these are Plan B molds. Um, I forgot what I paid for these, but I think they were in the $140 range. It, it was like a week ago. Um, but yeah, so phenomenal, phenomenal artist. The guy does great things. Um, go to his uh, website, planbholsters.com. You can see all of the molds that he uh, makes for other benders. Um, he's a pretty good guy. And you can see that these speak for themselves. They look great. So, tell you what. Tell him I sent you. Tell him Miggy sent you. Have a good one, guys. Happy bending.